Hi guys to everyone, it's Alda from Poison Draw. Today it's my pleasure to have with us Josh from The Lunar Effect. Uh, first thing, the easiest question, how is going? <laughs> it's going really well. Um, it was, uh, we're really excited for the album launch, of course. Um, we're starting to do a bit more gigging and it's, it was my birthday yesterday as well. So Happy birthday! <laughs> Happy birthday! So, how did you celebrate? I did sod all. It was brilliant. I did absolutely nothing. And I loved it. The best thing. <laughs> Being with your, I think at least you were with your family, I hope. That's it. That's it. The best birthday ever. But of course, I mean, you have as well like an upcoming album, Sounds of Green and, and Blue. That's gonna, like we, we were saying, it's gonna be actually officially released the 12th of April. But the pre order are up, are out to everyone that wants, right? Yeah, they're ready to go. Okay. Get your hands okay. on it. And where they can find their pre-order? I mean, on Bandcamp website. Yeah, on Bandcamp, you can message okay. us, and we'll we'll yeah. sort of like hook you up as well. Okay. Tell you about all our stuff. We've got like a mailing list, so we'll keep you updated. Okay. So let's say that if someone want, wants to catch, I mean, the, the, I think they even they can Google look, Lunar Effect pre-order. They're gonna find it. So, like someone was saying. Yeah, sure. So I was saying, Google is your like your mother, right? And something she will answer, give an answer. Oh, Lorraine Lewis from Vixen. I'm gonna quote it because uh, she's my friend. But anyway, I'm <laughs> not. That's it. And I think the best yeah. for us is yeah. to come and buy it at the gigs because like you yeah. could probably put it in your hands. <laughs> but you have done a show uh, as well uh, um, before the release of the. You have actually a show release for the like a release party for the album planned, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we're going to be um, at, uh, um, at the Black Heart in Camden on the 26th. 26th um, so of, so before so of March? After, after. after 20, so of April. 26th of April. April. So it's going to be, yeah. it's, I mean, it's a cool area, of course. So it's going to be in London. And then, but you're planning to go all around UK for a little bit, or just that's the only gig you're planning until now? Um, we're, we're kind of booking stuff up at the moment. So okay. we've got plans. Um, I mean, we've got. Uh, potentially one in in Paris at the end of the year. Um, we're looking at maybe going Fancy. to uh, Finland with Spa, so that should be really cool. Fancy and cold. <laughs> Could it be the name of the two? Going to Paris and Finland. There's a beautiful, two beautiful countries, though. Two different countries, but fucking beautiful. Just, I mean, I, I, I'm happy for that. Enjoy. But of course, I mean, just uh, me. People get could jump in in this interview by accident or because they know Lunar Effect or they follow positive rock. I don't know. People follow. They might ask, who is Josh? I mean, where he came from? So, no, where you actually came from because of God, okay. But like your musical journey. So, sure. to give her like as well, like a kind of a background about to the interview as well. So how did you really like your own musical journey, like since you were a kid until today, so we have to grab pen and paper and start to... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, well for me it was, um, uh, there was always a guitar in the house, um, I never knew how to play it for the longest time, um, but when I was a, a very small child, I was a choir boy, and I, uh, I got to the point where I was uh, auditioned for Canterbury Cathedral, got accepted to that. Um, swiftly dropped out because you have to be boarded and I didn't like that. Me? Um, and then towards secondary school, I fell in love with guitar, had guitar lessons, all that kind of stuff. Massive fan of Hendrix, um, Steve Ray Vaughan, Eric Clapton, all those kind of classics. My dad is um, going to be happy listening to this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then um, at some point it just got really heavy. I think my friend introduced me to uh, uh, Dragonaut by Sleep. And that was my first kind of intro to Stoner, and then from there I found Caius and Slip, Slippery Slope, and that was it. Yeah. I've so, um, yeah. And then um, years later, I was sort of I really want to join a band. I played guitar on a few. Okay. Um, and then I was out really late with my um, with my now wife. Um, and we were on the tube and some guy was like, oh, hey, you a musician? And I was just like, yeah. And he goes, oh, we're doing like these open mic nights. Do you want to come down? 
and I, was, I didn't have any songs written, but I was like, yeah, sure, like, blagged it. Um, and then I had three days, I think, to write some songs. Um, okay. And one of them, one of them was Calm Before the Calm. So, um, okay, I'm not going to talk mean, about that now. Okay. But, but to be fair, that was just the lyrics. Just the lyrics. Okay, the music so got it wasn't the, 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 the sound, it was just the word. No, 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 no. So this was, oh, this was oh, me oh. and... Uh, me and just me and my guitar, you know, doing, um, you know, places like, uh, I don't know, just bars in Camden. Yeah. That yeah. Sort of stuff. yeah. Um, and then I auditioned, I met, um, I met Mark, who's now in, in the band. We're now back up to five. He used to be the bassist. Okay. Uh, like years ago. And I met him, but by chance and found out about the band. And then when I went to audition later on, I realized that I'd already spoken to Mark and um world is small? I did. pardon the world is small it's a small place yeah yeah right yeah for sure um and um yeah i auditioned um with the uh, track woman from the last album and that wasn't my song but they said oh this is our new song sing it and i was like cool and that and that was that and you were and you were taken by the band enjoying the band because of, yeah because like you said call before the call became a full length the first full length, of course, is in, in, in 2019. And I mean, uh, since you wrote that, even bef like even before auditioning, I mean, why did you, did you just choose Come Before the Calm, not Come Before the Storm? Oh, Come, yeah. So, um, yeah, just to be, I just want to be absolutely clear. I just wrote the lyrics, like, for, for yeah, like, yeah, but know, that, that, so. that's the lyrics that but, I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. So, um, the idea is that. Um, I don't usually speak about lyrics because I think, like, I think usually um, songs belong to the person who's listening to it. You know, yeah. someone tells yeah. me their songs yeah. about yeah. something specific. It's no longer mine anymore. But in terms of Calm Before the Calm, it's like five years old. <laughs> um, it's it's mainly about the um, nothing really ever happening and the real fear of the mundane. Okay, you're still there. You're frozen. Yeah, yeah, there you yeah, yeah. Just, um, yeah. yeah, you were like this for a while. Um, but but um, no, it's about it's about fear of living a life that's just really boring and normal. Um, and yeah. uh, uh, calm for the calm, just nothing ever happens, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, as it turns out, it's not really relevant anymore because it's exactly what I like. I like the, the world being small and stuff, but I think that was partly me being I was what 20. 2021. Yeah, thinking, that's oh, like... my life's going to be different. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's... yeah, and about of course, I mean, um, your the words of course, I mean, strange to land as EP before release, and then we had come before the call. Mm -hmm. But and these were like, let's say, from the sound aspect of it, of it. so from just uh, pure like, let's say, the growth of the sound. In the last two uh, release, which different you see about you saw about it, and you, you perceive as well. Yeah, so uh, Strange Lands was actually released um, with John singing the guitarist mm -hmm. before I joined the band, okay. um, and I feel like they had um, like their it was very sort of psychedelic kind of sixties roots um, that's, with that's some really heavy sounds, and I. I think when I joined, I'm, I'm massively into. I like I like imagery in music. I like it to be really like quite cri cryptic, and I also really love the '90s alternative scene. Okay. So I like, and I'm, I I like I say out the other members of the band, I'm into the heavier music. Yeah. So I feel like that influence um, came in maybe, um, and I, yeah. So yeah, I think I think that's the difference. So, like, when we speak about 90s alternative heavier, what do you mean? Sure. So, <laughs> I like, um, heavy, I'd say there's a separate thing. So, uh, 90s alternative, I'd say, um, like, Soundgarden, Alice in Chains, Helmet, mm -hmm. uh, like, these kind of, um, basically, if it's on San Andreas Radio X, yeah. <laughs> I liked it. Um, and, um, but, 
yeah, that kind of stuff. And then in terms of heavier, like Electric Wizard, and I, I always try and like we're really good at sort of keeping each other in check. Because if it was up to me, we'd be yeah. like an Electric Wizard clone, and it would be awful because uh, uh, there's too many. <laughs> um, but um, but I think we're all really good at keeping each other in check and getting our influences yeah. in. So it kind of evens it out. Yeah, of course. I mean, of course. Well, I mean, it's not it's like every. Uh, member of the band as different influences of kind of similar but of course when there is a new musician joining the band even just having not the small shade of different influence yeah. as well as a lot and of course like you um there is of course there the, the release of uh, pulling daisies out as a scene mm. and that with a beautiful video clip and uh, the song is, is beautiful i mean because uh, i I love, I mean, I love 60s, 70s, 90s, like whatever music. But that said that I grew up with the 90s alternative as well, like uh, like you mentioned, Sun Garden, uh, Alice in Chain, uh, El Sapt, all this type of scene. And I, yeah. I, I had uh, another person that is in Pause on the Rock, that she grew up with all the 70s. And we both liked it. It was like, oh no, that's our rock. No, that's... Uh, uh, so we were like, what? Whoa, what's going on? Something is... Yeah. So how, I mean, how we could describe the Lunar Effect sound of today, of course? No, um, <laughs> it's really tough. I, 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 it's, um... It can, can be even, not, not a word, just let's say in, in your own words. I think, I think we just, we just play what we want to hear <laughs> and we're not afraid to just play what we want. Yeah not what everyone else wants and it just so happens we all like really good music <laughs> so um, I, I feel like I've, yeah I think I think we're also um, really respectful of each other we're really good yeah. at sort of giving like yeah. giving each other feedback as well we'll say some we'll yeah. call something out if it's not good and I think that just results in this really cool melting pot of um, you know uh, uh, like uh, Dan, he really likes proggy stuff. Well, he likes loads of stuff, but some of the stuff that stands out to me is things like Elephant Tree, um, like that kind of that kind of stuff. Brett likes all sorts of weird technical stuff. He reference people that we've never heard of, and they're absolutely <laughs> insane. John's massive fan of the Beatles. I've told you what I like, and we but, just find a way in the middle. I think. And, that, and then you, yeah, you like just put it into the shaker, and then you got the raw effect basically. <laughs> Yeah. That's uh, and then I think that as well the people that can hear all these kind of influences in your music, like a little bit of sixties vibe, sixties vibe, a little bit of nineties, uh, uh, but a little bit, which a little bit of these and these and these and that. It's uh, mm. like a, something as well new, for example, it's contemporary so, because as well, I think that you could have as well an uh, an not an avant garde, but like a, a looking for a new sound, just like going more towards composing. What you want composing that's what you're it's expressing it's exploring new new scenery otherwise you yeah. could say okay you know what you like Beatles okay let's do one song like 60s and then we do another songs like I don't know uh, Black Hole Sun can you imagine how you yeah. made about it, all this that, stuff? <laughs> yeah it's not it's not but I'd say it's never never like that at, at all it's usually yeah. um, I've got like it'll be someone who just comes up with a riff yeah um, or someone just brings something and then we'll send it on like WhatsApp. We'll all have a, a listen, play around. I'll write yeah. some lyrics or John will already have some. And it just, we just all, you know, put it together and have a, like Call, uh, call It In, for example, yeah, was written, uh, Brett came up with the bass line and we wrote it in shorter amount of time than the song actually is. <laughs> so we wrote it in about four minutes and it's like a seven, eight minute song. So, okay, okay. So basically you just, Sat down and that was it. Yeah. You talked and that was was the lyrics. Basically. While you were talking, the other was falling but, off. But the again, mouth. call it in was another one. I was one of the, one of those songs that I wrote for the solo circuit in those three days as well. Okay. Okay. So you know there are songs that you were used for. Oh, there's definitely a back catalogue. I've got like a Google Drive with all my lyrics on. <laughs> like one day, if I know, I could die every full of song, like a poem. Yeah. 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 That's it. <laughs> the the sonnet of Josh. Josh sonnet. Okay. And maybe it's okay. You know what? I just choose the wrong career. I'm gonna go back to writing and maybe 
I'm gonna publish a book like on Amazon, like my own book. <laughs> yeah, wicked. Yeah, of course. You can even do a book, uh, you know, that goes to that goes go that goes, of course, along with the with the CDs. Yeah, with the album, with the music. Yeah, book of yeah. the album, like a book yeah. of the film. Or made the movie. Okay, we are, we are going out of. <laughs> okay, just a movie about uh, <laughs> sounds of green and blue. Just a movie about that. Oh well, how sure. could it be a, bo- a movie about sounds of green and blue? Like, if you could imagine a picture, a movie about that. Like, you could describe the scenery. I don't know why this question came into my mind. I don't know. I as well, I'm not on drugs. <laughs> yeah, no, fine. Um, well, there's the green and blue is. Uh, is a reference to um, a lyric in In Grey, which is going to be on the album, and it's literally a water. There's a few questions we've got um, from different folks saying, oh, what does green and blue mean? Is it like sadness and melancholy and all this kind of stuff? And it's like, no, it's water. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, um, so in terms of imagery, I'd say um, the idea was like when you're underwater and you like you got your eyes open, you're kind of panicking yeah. a little bit. And you just concentrate yeah. on the little things. That's true. So it's like kind of a oh, there's kind of a, of a, an element in it in your yeah. music, which is the water in this case. Yeah, I'd say there's that's a, there's a lot of that in the, in this album. I um, mean, it was, it was yeah. coincidental, but ah. just the theme, you know. But why the sound? I mean. There's the sound that we can because of course it's that that like you said like the green and the blue is the water. Yeah, um, because you can you, when you're in water you don't you don't just see it you 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 hear it as well you can hear it in your ears. Like and you can hear people talking above the water and stuff. Or have you ever done that thing? It's it's really little. But you ever done that thing where you're in the bath and your head's under the water and you tap the side of the bath? <laughs> All these little things that it it just yeah it's silly yeah. but. Yeah, yeah, but if you combine all this together and uh, you actually ana- pay, not analyze, but just imagine that, of course, I can't see. I mean, I, unless I'm not, I don't have a fucking glasses, you know, underwater. Yeah. And I, underwater, I can't really open my eyes, but if I could, blue and green could be uh, the color that I could see. But since yeah. I can't, blue and water is kind of well, a. I mean, again- yeah, again, again it, it was originally like it sounds like green and blue, like it just yeah. it sounds cool. That's, yeah. that's a, the main part of it. But like in in the song, it's it says it's called in grey and it uses colours to kind of uh, it, like um, like uh, stones in hand in grey. It's not like grey isn't sort of any kind of metaphor. It's literally like stones are grey. <laughs> but I knew I know when people listen to it, people will think, oh, what does that mean? Yeah, I love it. It's just so... <laughs> yeah, of course, of course, like as well, green and true. I mean, because if we talk about green, what is that? Green field, green, yeah. green mountain, green land, lowland, highland. What is that? But of course, yeah. there are colors that sh- shades of water which are reflection. Yeah. But also, water. also, who am I to tell the person what it means when they listen to it? You know what I mean? If they think of something, I mean, cool. if, I, if it could be the sounds of green and blue, could be the sound of the of a flowing river and the trees, uh, the leaves from the tr- of a tree. I don't know. Just make my own uh, imagery from that. Yeah, oh. great. Could be, yeah. could be the, the, something else. I don't know where it's gonna get here to lose. I think that's cool because people really can make their own. Um, let's say they can have their own image about that you know yeah. that's and it's yeah. but about lyric wise what is about sounds of green and blue lyric i mean um, yeah so in gray specifically there's a verse um uh well no it's the chorus um should know that but um there's this idea of uh like having uh rocks tied to you and okay. putting a ri- and putting the river Okay. Um, and it's like up in the air. Like, do you mind? I don't think I mind. Uh, and, and and it's that that kind of di- like dark kind yeah. of themes. I, guess. Um, I wouldn't say they're relevant anymore to me, but the um, but the but it's that kind of you you hear about. Um, have you ever seen the film um, American Beauty? Yeah, of course. Yeah. You know when he gets shot 
and he said, oh, you think you're going to see your life flash through your eyes, but it's actually just nothing. Yeah. So I imagine like when people are about to, I've, I've had a couple of near death experiences, but you, you don't notice like the big profound things. Okay. You look at the really simple things like, oh, the water's green and blue or like, you know, it yeah. sounds weird or that makes a funny noise. You notice all those little things rather than the big profound things. Yeah. So, so I kind of like those little, little, little bits. So that's, let's say, the core of the entire full land. Pardon? Let's, let's say this is the core, the core of the entire full land. About uh, for, well, for, for that line, I guess that's yeah. fair. It's really like the the, the, the influence of, of uh, writing uh, the lyrics came from always like uh, life experiences or I oh 100 yeah 100 so there's a couple that are like Ocean Queen it's just about it's cool Ocean Queen it's nothing really and there's a couple that are about like a wizard or something you know yeah. but um, but yeah a lot most of them are about personal experiences and like. Um, but it never sticks on a theme, which is why I like to keep it nice yeah. and cryptic. And that, 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 there's a lot about cryptic in Lunar Yeah, fair. And I fair. understand that. And even the name of the band could be related to water, kind of, because uh, l Lunar, you know, Moon, I have the, it has kind of influence to the to the water itself, like we used to say mm. in Century, we used to know in Century. So that's, um, you should do an album called Water, that's it. So everyone understands. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's wet. Yeah, Huddle. I mean, what if you want really to save, uh, like say, to save word, to save even yep. letter, consonant? They pay word, by the letter on the Yeah, <laughs> just put the W, that's it, W, dot. Yeah. That's even confusing, could, could be like World Wild website. But, uh, but, but I mean, like, speaking about that, that the, what is as well the sound, because uh, like we mentioned in uh, Calm Before the Calm, like of course, you, there was your uh, influence, like your new influence brought into the sound. That of course there is as one well in sound of green and blue. So now you can tell me better in your opinion, in your own perspective, being into the band, how actually in uh, five, five years basically changed everything. Because of course we went through lockdown, we went through all this whatever, whatever happened. Something affect you, like the yeah. lockdown could affect the, 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 the maybe even how you I don't know, wrote the, the the album, everything recorded it. I don't know. Yeah, sure. So I guess the difference with so with the with Calm Before the Calm that album, um, it we were almost like drawing from our own back catalogues of riffs and lyrics and that kind of stuff. So when I came into the band, I had all these kind of like bits and bobs. Um, and others had like riffs ready to go. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of like, here's what we've got. You know, here, here it is. <laughs> um, whereas Sounds of Green and Blue, we were kind of starting from scratch. Um, and we were like, cool, how do we top that? Um, and in our minds, we were like, oh, we want to keep up momentum. Okay. Um, but then lockdown happened. <laughs> so um, we you went from, that. yeah, we went from uh, like, you know, regularly rehearsing gigging together to mm -hmm. um like talking on whatsapp zoom calls and stuff um and to keep ourselves busy we did like some covers so okay. we took part in like a like 50 years from kind of uh type deal where we did uh um things like be my friend um like songs like that did a um I think we even, yeah, we even did like a, we we're on part of like a compilation album um, uh, when we did like, we did Zig, uh, Lady Stardust um, mm. and like things like that. And we put a couple of YouTube videos out. It never really got much traction. Yeah. I think the biggest annoying thing for us during lockdown was that we're all rubbish at social media. <laughs> um, we're awful at it. Uh, I, I don't get it. No one gets I it. I mean, uh, I try, but I'll just put things like I'm, I'm a boomer. Probably. Yeah. So <laughs> like, yeah, it's, yeah. We're all, um, so yeah, lockdown kind of it was really frustrating for us. Yeah. Um, um, and yeah, it's really it was really quite annoying. <laughs> and I guess a lot of be everyone was in the same boat, really. But um, we're the same. And um, afterwards, we were sort of gathering these ideas together. And we were like, oh, this isn't really, you know, this isn't really like uh, these songs aren't really great. 
this yeah. isn't no and we had loads of different ideas like five years worth of four years worth of ideas um and we condensed it down right actually this is wicked <laughs> um and uh, you know um we recorded um mainly at home so i did all my okay. all the lyrics and all the vocals in a um oh. my flat in Walthamstow back when i lived there <laughs> um, and then um the only studio time we got was for the drums uh for dan to do the drums because okay. you can't it's not the same. This yeah, drums need to be wicked. It's not easy. Yeah, it's not easy though as well recording drum at home. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, and the rest of it we all did at home. Um, yeah, yeah, that was it. And then we, um, yeah. the first album, John mixed it. Um, yeah. uh, this time we sent it off to um, someone, and they uh, a guy called Luke. <laughs> I can't remember anything else about him. Um, <laughs> that's awful, but he was great. And yeah, as well like uh, in the. So in this year, so in this five year, in your opinion, there was something new in the sound, like something that maybe there wasn't in the first half line, first line. Yeah, for sure. I think um, I think it was more. I mean, for me personally, I feel like I like matured quite a bit, or at least got a bit more easy in my thinking. Mm. Like I, I was very sort of like I want this in the first one. I wanted to sound exactly like this in terms of like the voice and stuff and I was a bit more I think we were more like let's see what happens in this one I, I don't know I, that might be unfair the other the others, yeah. others might feel different yeah but of yeah. course I, mean, I speak about you with you <laughs> yeah I mean yeah for me personally yeah. I was a bit more um the first album was like you know this is my first mm -hmm. like, again personally speaking first album I like um, I want it I want my print on it and I want it to be like this and it, yeah. my, yeah, I want it to sound like this This time there was a lot more trust because it was like if you think this sounds good, then I believe you. In yeah. in, in a sense, like or if this if this is the part you think is going to make this work, then let's roll with it. And yeah. then it, uh, then you know because the thing about um, our band is that John is a absolutely brilliant um, writer and arranger of songs. Song, yeah. um, so you can literally give him a give him a riff and stuff and i've, I've sort of like yeah. passed over ideas for songs he's like okay switch that around usually be sitting like this yeah change that <laughs> <laughs> that's the beauty of I'm, i'm joking he did that once <laughs> I mean, because that shows that you are some that a, a, prof, a, a pro first a professional musician though that as well that you are a, a talent and creativity in this field which is important but i think as well like you were saying maybe in this album there was more like Um, you already kind of built all the chemistry with the band after the first album. Yeah, yeah. You worked in a, a really stressful period. It was the pandemic, so there was a lot going on, and maybe now you felt like, okay, we just did it. Let's go with the flow. Well, kind of like again, that was just me personally, but I also think like the you know the way we are together, it kind of saw us through lockdown. Like I can yeah. imagine a lot of bands sort of didn't make it; they broke yeah. up. Um, and you got strength, strength, stronger. Yeah, I think I think you know because I think yeah we yeah. we sort of there was no question either there was no like oh is this going to work mm -hmm. out it was just like we're going to carry on making music somehow. Yeah, yeah of course. Um, yeah, and uh, there's one song, just one. The first that comes to your mind that we would like to advise to someone that maybe wants just I don't know they're going to see this interview and say okay I'm going to listen. Before on Spotify and then buy it. Let's say, for example. Yeah. Um, I think if they're if they're a fan of the scene, they like Stone and stuff. I think Ocean Queen's going to be down the down the street. Okay. I think that's going to be like, um, uh, yeah. If they, but I think, yeah, I'd say that I'd say that one. Okay. Uh, we're sick of it because we've played it so many times. Okay. Uh, but. <laughs> but <laughs> it's, um, but uh, no, I'm joking. It's a, it's, oh, no, it's it's a and, um, but I, I think uh, it's tough. Fear before the fall is a, is a wicked one. Okay, okay. I, I don't know. I don't know. It's tough. It's tough. They have to hear all the album. But let's say they'll start with one of these two. Let's say just uh, a personal and immediate advice. Oh, <laughs> pulling daisies. Pulling. If it's an instant knee knee jerk, listen to pulling daisies. Exactly. It's already out. So. Can do it now. There you go. Like now, no, no, really. Like I can put it like now. While we're talking, almost we actually is out. And uh, 
of course you're, you're playing guys some gigs after i mean the release show the part the release part show in camden do you have planned other live shows or yeah for sure i mean like i said we've, we're talking with far and a few other folks in terms of trying mm -hmm. to get abroad because we've played london so many times like okay you go out abroad really. don't get me wrong we're going to continue doing that because we yeah. love it yeah um but we do want to sort of stretch out a little bit more yeah of course you deserve it so you were mentioning paris and finland so there's going to be more some show maybe in the future around the europe as well yeah we hope so that's the plan okay okay so let's say the best way that people that can have to, of course, is always look into the, the social media website and something to to be, you know, like, of course, updating. Unfortunately, about they have to go on our social media, yes. Or you can send them letter, <laughs> maybe mail, you can do mailing list, like, uh, I don't know, Hosier did, which is uh, you sign up to his mailing list and you send the news the, 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 yeah, yeah. with the personal notes right by him, you know, like you also do in the old ways. I got nothing against social media, like I said, I'm just... Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know, that's if I think uh, like a millionaire musician Hosier can do that by someone else for him. But anyway, so just kind of let's say summarizing everything. The the album is out the 12th of April. The pre-order are re available for anyone. You can Google it, look on social media, the website. But you're gonna release some single before uh, the the so there will be some other single before. Yeah, the there's one more single coming <laughs> out. Um, uh, it's gonna be Flowers for Teeth. Okay, so there's already a release date for that, or people have just to expect. I think there is, but I can't remember it. Uh, it's definitely March. Okay, so of course, of course. I mean, if it's not this month, it's not. Gonna... I think I think it might be the twelfth, but I, okay. I could be wrong. Okay, but let's say people can just expect that as well, at least the one single before, and uh, the al the album is gonna be uh, will be in the, of course the streaming services and physical copy too. Yes, hundred percent. So CDs, vinyl, type, what type of format? Yeah, so I got records um, and got like streaming. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, I mean, and, uh, everyone can buy it, even for pe old people like us that wants to prefer, you know, having the. That's it. Content. I told you, like, I told you, we're we're all for like self promotion and stuff. We could <laughs> just, uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So thanks for having me on. <laughs> it was a pleasure. It's okay. So. What can we say? After a lot of uh, confusion, we did the interview and now I can say have a good evening. It was really a pleasure, Josh. I wish you good the rest of the days and uh, wish the best to you and your family. And maybe see you on the road in Italy and bring your family. Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you so much, Leila. Have, have a lovely rest of your evening. You too as well. Have a good rest of the evening. Bye bye. Thank you.